Mid-range phones have come a long way and there are plenty of phones out there that offer excellent performance at an affordable price. So, let's talk mid-range phones. Just to clarify, the phones that we're referring to in this video all cost under a thousand Singapore dollars, so around 720 US dollars. Pricing does differ for each region though, so be sure to check out your local shops for how much these phones cost in your country. Let's start from the cheapest and work our way up. We won't go into too much detail, but we'll have links to the full reviews of these phones in our description below. The Huawei Nova 7 SE comes in at just 528 Singapore dollars or 350 US dollars, and the performance of this phone actually really stunned us. You get the new Kirin 5G 820 SoC, 8GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, a 6.5 inch Full HD display, and a quad camera array at the rear with a 64 megapixel main camera. The phone runs extremely smoothly and definitely exceeds my expectations of what a $500 phone should do. The only downside is the lack of Google mobile services and perhaps the relatively small 4000 mAh battery. Next up is the Xiaomi Mi Note 10 Lite at 549 Singapore dollars or 395 US dollars. Running on the Snapdragon 730G, 8GB of RAM, 64GB of storage, a 6.47-inch AMOLED display, and a quad camera array, it doesn't quite match up to the Nova 7 SE on specs. But the main draw here is that the Mi Note 10 Lite still has Google Mobile Services and the Google Play Store. Another plus point is that the phone has a 5,260mAh battery, which is definitely the biggest one on this list. At the $500 range onwards, it's rare to find a phone that will stutter or lag when running multiple apps. And it's the same here. The Mi Note 10 Lite runs smoothly, although I do have to point out, the speaker placement on this phone is easily covered when using the phone in landscape mode. With the Sony Xperia 10 Mark II, you might not know who this phone is for. Using a unique 21 by 9 aspect ratio, it's definitely a great device to watch movies on or even just for web browsing since you get more information on the screen. Specs-wise, it's not great at all. The phone runs on the Snapdragon 665, 4GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, and a tri-camera array on the rear with a 12 megapixel main camera. With the older processor and small amount of RAM, it does mean that you can feel the phone being rather sluggish when opening too many apps or when scrolling through videos. The bright spots of this phone is definitely targeted towards people who want to consume content on their phone. The screen makes for excellent movie watching, and the phone supports Sony's DXEE HX upscaling as well as the LDAC Hi-Res codec. Battery is a weak point here though, with only a 3600mAh battery inside. For 569 Singapore dollars, this is a bit lackluster for the general public, but for movie buffs or audio files, this is an affordable option for content viewing on the go. At 599 Singapore dollars, the Vivo V19 is an interesting choice here. Although the Snapdragon 712 processor is a mid-range chip, performance is smooth thanks to the 8GB of RAM included. It seems like storage pretty much tops out at 128GB for most mid-range phones, and you get that with the V19 as well. Camera performance is a bit of a mixed bag, but overall, I'd say selfies taken with the phone are pretty decent, and the wide-angle camera stands up admirably against a flagship phone like the Huawei P40 Pro Plus. But if you compare overall performance to price, some of the phones mentioned earlier in this video might be more value for money. Let's take a break from Android phones, because Apple has refreshed the mid-range series with the new iPhone SE. Even though it's considerably more affordable at just 649 Singapore dollars, you still get top-notch specs here, with the same A13 chip found in the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Touch ID also makes a return here, which is pretty convenient in this day and age of everybody being required to wear masks when we're out and about. The iPhone SE might not have the ultra-wide and telephoto lenses that flagship phones have, and in fact, it's the only phone on our list that has a single lens at the back. But it's a great camera. Our one quibble is the battery life the battery life is on par with the iPhone 8. And with heavy usage, you might find yourself having to charge the iPhone SE twice a day. Aside from that though, it's an excellent budget phone for Apple users. We come to the most expensive of the pack, the OnePlus 8 at 998 Singapore dollars. 
OnePlus has definitely surprised us with this phone. You get a Snapdragon 865 processor, 8GB of RAM, 128GB of storage, a 6.5-inch AMOLED display, 90Hz refresh rate, and a 4,500mAh battery. Are you surprised? Because I am. These are flagship specs at around 700 US dollars. And even the phone itself feels amazing in the hand with a satin glass back. There were features cut to keep the price low. So yes, no wireless charging and no IP rating. But are those really all that necessary? Personally, I think removing these features is a worthwhile trade-off. But if they are absolutely indispensable to you, there's also the OnePlus 8 Pro, which has wireless charging, IP68, a bigger battery, 120Hz refresh rate and more for 1,298 Singapore dollars or 899 US dollars. With all these great phones, is there really even a need for flagship phones anymore? Well, yeah, for sure. But if you're on a budget and you want good performance out of whatever phone you buy, there definitely are excellent options out there that won't kill your wallet. Anyway, those are my thoughts on these phones. If you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down below. Like this video, subscribe to us if you haven't, follow us on Facebook and on Instagram for more content. Until the next one, see you guys.